Greetings everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, today's video, I will be showing you guys how to enable the smart turn feature of the Mazda 6. Now, what is a smart turn feature? Now, smart turn is a feature of the indicator stock where um, when you engage it, it will have the indicators turn signals flash three times and then automatically shut back off. Okay, now for those of us who have these cars, um, this feature is um, by default out of the factory disabled. Okay, so if you want this feature, and there are a number of other features that come from the factory um, disabled, you can take the car to the dealer. Well, you'd look in your user manual, there's actually a table, a listing of them. And um, in my user manual, it's on it begins on page 10 9, I think it is. And um, so you look at what, what you want, whether you want something enabled or disabled, you take it to the dealer and you um, can have them change it. Of course, they'll charge you for that. Okay. But um, how it is, if you look at the indicator stock, and I'll have a little uh, a video here in, in the corner in a second to show you how it works. Um, the indicator stock has two detents in each direction. Okay, the first detent is actually a, a temporary switch. So if you push down on it just slightly, it will actually spring back to the off position. Okay, it's not play. It might seem like, oh, there's a little play here. It's not play. It's actually a switch. Okay, but if you push um, in either direction a little bit harder on the, on the indicator stock, it'll stay in that position for your standard um, turn signal. Okay, some Ford vehicles and some other vehicles will have this... Uh, you know, um, smart turn feature. I don't know what they call it in other vehicles, but they will have it on um, from the factory enabled, but with these cars, it's disabled. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, today I'm using a software called Forescan. I'm not gonna be doing a tutorial on for, on for how to use Forescan per se, just how to use Forescan to get what we want to get. Okay, um, the connector that I will be using uh, between my laptop and the car is a generic ELM327 connector with a switchable um, bus feature. Okay, there's some some um, OBD2 USB connectors that are automatically switched. These are those are the versions that are recommended for Forescan. I um, I have this one here as a temporary measure. It wasn't very expensive. It cost me about twenty dollars. The Automatic ones are about 40, 50, 60 in that region. All right, but we're not going to we're not going to belabor that point a little bit. I'm just telling you what I'm using. I'll have a list of the devices and whatnot that I'm using in the uh, description below. All right, so let's jump right into this um, tutorial. So we have four scans started up, and we we're going to get a series of uh, of warnings. Okay, okay, so. We've cleared that one. So what we want to do, we want to connect to the car. Okay, we've done that. Just a little warning here again. Make sure that everything is in place. You see, okay. All right. It's found uh, the profile for this car. I've used it before, so it's stored the profile of the system. All right. It's going to ask me if my my uh, my adapter has the HSMS CAN switch, which it does. It's going to ask me to switch to MS. Done that. Switch to say so, okay, and we're done with that for the time being. So we want to go here to the configuration and programming um, module. So these are the list of all of the modules that uh, Force can um, can um, manipulate. So we're looking for the BCM module. Okay, so not the as built. This one here. Okay. Click on that. We go to the bottom left here again, and we click uh, Run Service Procedure, or the Play button. We click that. Okay, so it's telling me that I need to have the the switch back on the high speed CAN bus. Okay. Click OK. So it's doing its thing. So here we have the Smart Turn feature. As we see here, it's disabled. Okay. So we want to go here, boom, and then we want to edit selected. Okay. And these are our options, either disabled or enabled. We want it enabled, so we click on enabled, and then we click the check mark. Boom. Now, it's not saved yet. 
you have to click on write. Once you click on write, it wants you to confirm that the old value for smart turn is disabled and the new value is enabled. Yes, we'll click the check mark. Okay, so the progress bar is going. Okay, it says, all right, it's been programmed successfully and it's asking me to cycle the ignition off and then back on. Okay, so we'll do that. We shut down. We restart. Okay, now, <clears throat> what has happened is that the all of the steering wheel controls have been reset. Okay, and unfortunately for us, the steering angle sensor was reset. So you will notice in your dashboard, you will see warnings for the traction control. Okay, but this is an easy fix. Do not panic to recalibrate the uh, steering angle sensor. We turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. And then all the way back to the right. Okay, and that resets the whole thing. All right, so you'll see the warning lights are gone. Okay, so this should have our uh, our uh, smart turn feature enabled. That's all it takes. Okay, and there are a number of other features that we can play around with, but that's what we're doing, dealing with here and now. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Um, if you have something, have a um, you know one of these uh, personalization um, features that you want me to show you how to enable or disable or whatever, explain it to you, or any other questions you might have, you know, just drop me a line. And, you know, I I usually answer my questions or your questions uh, very quickly. All right, so. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helps some of you out. And um, catch you guys soon.